Welcome to this week's PHP Development Podcast by Matthew Kamani. For any questions about this podcast or any other resources, visit www.c2bsolutions.co.uk or email php at c2bsolutions.org.uk. We hope you enjoy. Um, so, right. So I know you did a talk in London and uh, you've done a few of this about TDD. So just wanted to get into TDD. Um, and it's up to you how you want to go on about this. So we'd like to get into why, what is TDD firstly? Um, and then obviously we can go to why people should use it, how to use it and, and so on. And your, yeah. and, and your experience with TDD, how you came across it and um, yeah, as much as you can really. Yeah, so TDD is test-driven development. Uh-huh. Um, uh, in basic terms, it's writing a test before you write code Uh Um, but it's kind of more than that it's more about using your test code that you're writing first to design how each part of your application will work especially Uh at a unit level unit test level you're looking at your unit tests being the first thing to interact with your code so Uh they're you know if those tests are hard to write Uh and make it hard to interact with something you're about to write maybe change that up right first started really using it professionally um, when I joined Sainsbury's and that's one of the reasons I I joined the team was in the interview um, I was looking for a role where I could go and learn TDD and use it heavily Mm. and um, I spent quite a lot of time during the interview kind of with one of the developers showing me what they'd been doing and I joined because I wanted to learn off those developers of how to get into TDD and how to do it rather than just kind of playing with it at home. Yeah. Fantastic. And so, so you do that daily in your current job, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So on the smart shop team, we practice extreme programming. Uh-huh. So, so extreme programming is, um, what is it? It's a framework for, uh, an approach to programming. So it's, it's kind of an extension on agile. So it uses kind of, you, you use an agile approach to de- delivering software still, but uh-huh. it extends on that. So it's uh, about uh, using test automated testing and ensuring your code is of the highest quality through good testing. Uh-huh. Uh, and we also use pair programming uh, on SmartShop. Right. So we're always working with another developer um, and uh, our code's always being constantly reviewed and we're discussing the code as we do it <laughs> so it's, it, I, I find it a really fun way to work it's a great way to kind of ensure the quality of your code it's a great way to um, teach and learn at the same time uh-huh. because we work in a cross-functional manner yeah so my background is obviously PHP and uh-huh. back-end technologies uh-huh. um, Obviously, the smart shop application is a native iOS and Android application uh-huh. and features start at the application level. So I'll spend time developing the app Android application with an Android expert. And then we, we can discuss uh, where the issues are, where the integration points to the back end will work, how an API should look and things like that. Uh-huh. And all of that's driven out by tests from front to back. Right. Really uh, interesting. Really interesting. So I know um, you, you currently, um, this is another question that I'll, I'll go into it later, I guess, but yeah. in terms of the um, TDD, yes. what, why should um, developers use it? And, you know, you mentioned some of the benefits, but, you know, why should developers consider using this, those who are not using it? So one of the main reasons I got into TDD was <laughs> I was seeing uh, a lot of talks about continuous deployment right. and people pushing code and getting code into production faster uh-huh. and faster. Uh-huh. Obviously, if you're pushing your code into production quick, you need to know it's working. If, you, if, you know, if you're not got time to put a manual test in because that will slow down your deployment. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to be working like that. I wanted to be working on code and pushing it out really quickly. Uh-huh. And obviously, the, the key to all of these talks was that they were using some kind of automated testing and TDD. So that's where, what got me into it. And that's kind of what I like about it now is um, I can, when I write code, I write my test first. So the code I write, I know works. It works how I, I, I think it should work. 
Mm -hmm. how I've designed it to work with the test. Yeah. So it gives me the confidence when I push to production. There's no mm. worry that the code won't work. Yeah. There's, no, there's not going to be any big bugs or problems in the code. Yeah. Because my tests show me that there's no problems. So yeah. it makes deploying an easy mm -hmm. step, a stress-free step, because yeah. there's, there's nothing. Your, your tests are passing, so hope you know, nothing will break. No major problems. I mean, testing, automated testing, you might miss a few bits, but you're never going to miss the, the big hairy bugs. You're just missing tiny kind of little um, defects rather yeah. than kind of big problems. Okay. So that, that, that's why I, I think TDD is a great approach to writing code is it, you know, it means you write your code and you push it out really quickly and it's uh -huh. nice and stress-free. Uh -huh. um, it also means, you know, if you're on an on-call rotor, yeah. you're probably just going to be able to sleep because it's going to be fine. Yeah. You've tested it, nothing's going to break. It's great. Yeah. So as a developer, basically you're working with the end in mind. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And where does, um, I, I, I saw something about uh, testing pyramid. Yes. What, what does that mean? So the, the testing pyramid is, um, if you imagine a triangle, uh -huh. uh, the top of the triangle is, is um, the thinnest point and the bottom is the widest point. Right. And if you break that pyramid up into sections, uh -huh. the idea is, is the, the top section, you write the fewest types of those tests down to the very bottom section where you write the most tests. Uh -huh. So usually okay. in a, a, a testing pyramid, the bottom section will be unit tests because with unit tests you're going to write loads of unit tests absolutely loads of unit tests you're, yeah. you're looking at kind of every minute detail of each class each function you're writing uh -huh. so you're writing lots and lots of those and then at the top of the um pyramid you're, you're going to have end-to-end -end testing uh -huh. which is kind of you're testing you're looking at testing um the you core user journeys your happy path through your application to make sure everything works together but you're only going to write one or two tests for that yeah uh, there will be there'll be big heavy tests and they'll be slow to run so you don't want to run them very often mm. um so that, and that's the idea so and then in the middle you have um you have things like integration tests which is where you're looking at tying a few units together a few classes mm -hmm. together to make sure they work correctly or um and if you're you know, testing your, how you interact with the database and things like that. So you want fewer of those um, because the, the, the slower test you want fewer of. You don't want to be running these slow tests kind of on every little code change. You want to mm. run your unit tests, which should be quick, fast, yeah. Yeah. and safe to run every time you save. Whereas kind of end-to-end -end tests, you're probably going to look at running towards the end of a feature and definitely during your build pipelines. But you don't want to run those big, heavy, slow tests kind of every little change yeah okay interesting and um now that we're talking about tdd where does bdd fit in bdd and tdd i think are they they, they come together hand in hand i think bdd fits in with tdd in a uh -huh. way uh -huh. so if tdd is kind of testing everything bdd is kind of um it's part of that so uh -huh. it's kind of um in the test pyramid they um quite often there's a section called acceptance testing. And I think BDD fits in perfectly kind of there uh -huh. as a form of acceptance testing because right. um, you produce your Gherkin for your BDD tests mm. with conversations between developers, QAs, uh, product owners, subject matter experts on what you're developing. Yeah. So this is, you know, all the people involved in some kind of a project sitting down and defining how kind of the outcome, you know, what should the system do? In this case, it should do this. If this happens, it should do that. Uh, writing that down in a nice kind of given when then uh, syntax of Gherkin. Mm. And then once that, that kind of human readable Gherkin is complete, that becomes a, a feature card or a ticket. And you can just bring that in as your first set of tests to start your development process. It kind of gives you that first thing to work on. Um, so you, you'd probably work, so that, you know, BDD tests are probably gonna be your first tests and then you'll work. So once you start 
running those, you'll find you need a class, a few classes, so you can write some unit tests to make that part of the uh, BDD test work and then continue kind of looping from your top level BDD tests down to unit tests and integration tests to get things all tied together. And then slowly with all the units that you're building out, slowly that BDD test will finally complete. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So with, with TDD, you are, you're testing, you're testing first before you, you know, build any code. You're, you're just making sure that everything, you know, as you deploy it, it'll be, it'll be solid. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so you mentioned um, that obviously when you're doing this test and unit test, you have to go into so much detail. That must be quite a lot of work to do and uh, long-winded and, and that kind of stuff. So, yes, I think, so if you think about TDD being a, a long-winded approach, uh-huh. it's, I, don't, I don't think it is. I think you start with kind of the smallest little problem. Uh-huh. You you write out a test to solve that problem, uh-huh. and then you do the implementation. So you, with TDD approach, I think you spend a little time thinking about the test uh-huh. and writing the test, yeah. and then a little bit of time making just that bit of that test pass, uh-huh. and then you go back and you think again about the next thing that needs to happen. Yeah, write a test write some code and then go back and continue around that loop. Yeah. So it's lots of little bits of thinking, yeah. little bits of testing, little bits of coding. Right. Whereas if okay. you're not using TDD, yeah. I think you spend a lot more time doing a big upfront thing. Yeah. Okay. Big thinking about what's going to happen uh-huh. and designing out loads of classes that you might not need and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So okay. I think without TDD, yeah. I think in the end you'll get, a similar answer in about the same amount of time. Yeah. Okay. But the advantage of TDD is uh-huh. you've got there, your code's going to be nice and usable because yeah. of the tests designing it out. Yeah. But also it means your, your test is more, your code is more solid because it's tested and it's, you know, it's safe because you've got all those tests that have told you to write all your code. Yeah. Whereas if you've just been putting some code down, you'd uh-huh. have been manually testing it in some way. Yeah. but probably not the same way each time you tested it. And then also you've got no way of running that test next time. Say someone else picks up that bit of code. They don't know how you tested it. Yeah. There's, there's no tests. There's just what you did. You, you know, put a, run a CLI script or hit a web page. So kind of, I think without TDD or with TDD, the feature will take about the same amount of time. Yeah. But you've just got, those advantages of it's it's much safer because you've got the tests and also yeah. you're designing out the code to be more usable. Yeah. Um, if I have a project to finish, would people not struggle to think, hey, you know, if I take time to do this, um, it might basically slow down what I'm what I'm trying to do or slow down the project that I have. Yeah. No, I can completely understand that. Um, and I think it, especially if you're learning TDD yeah. uh, and you're new to it, then yes, I yeah. think that will obviously slow down your process because you're not only trying to think through how to implement some feature or some project, but you're mm-hmm. also trying to learn a whole new skill and a whole new suite of um, tools that help you to do yeah. that. Yeah. So yes, I think learning TDD will slow you down. But I think once you've got up to kind of you know, you've got a good knowledge of how to use the tools and yeah. how TDD works. Then uh-huh. I think you'll be flying away. But I think, yeah, you've got to allow for the the learning curve of uh, test driven development in the initial kind of stages. But I think once you've got down how to use the tools and things, I think you'll be you'll be flying. Interesting. So let's say um, for yourself, or, or how long do you think? let's say you're a professional developer and you, you, you're good at PHP, um, how long do you think it will take someone to pick this up? I don't know. I mean, so I've, I've been practicing TDD for probably six years now. Yeah. And I wouldn't consider myself an, an, a perfect expert. Right. Um, but I think within kind of a couple of months, so I had a really supportive team and they were really helping me learn TDD, yeah. which was yeah. a, a really great thing. Yeah. Um, I think a couple of months and I kind of 
was was getting to hang off the tools and how to do things and and that's when I felt I wasn't as slow as I was when I started yeah more comfortable with the speed and things yeah yeah okay really good so um I guess the question would be if someone is listening to this they're not in an environment where they can actually practice or do use TDD yes it's something they can start doing on your personal project so they can you know get up to speed with the tools definitely um yeah okay i'd say before you start with your personal projects i think uh-huh. a really great thing is to to try code cutters right so they're like uh, a code cutter is a a small exercise uh that you can do repeatedly uh-huh. so um i quite like the roman numeral converter cutter yeah where you you implement a function that takes a roman numeral and returns its integer value right so if you take something like that you could start testing that because that's a really nice uh kind of easy thing to start playing with the tools because you can start off obviously you're going to start off really easy so your first test will be um to write a test that checks when you give the letter i you return one and then you can go through each of them so you can say when I give the letter V, it returns five. When I mm. give the letter C, it returns a hundred. When I give the letter M, it returns a thousand. And that would be your, you know, go through all of the letters in um, Roman numerals. So the, the single, kind of the single letters. Yeah. Um, and that can be your first suite of tests. And then you can go on to kind of more complex things. So you could do II returns two. Yeah. And you just, you can really slowly build up Kind of the understanding of testing each little bit, only writing enough code to make each test pass. Yeah, um, and that's a, that's probably a really good way to play with TDD. That's a really good way to learn unit tests. Um, they're also probably the best place to start uh-huh. with learning TDD. Yeah, uh, a because you're going to write loads of them, but also they're probably the easiest step in than yeah. trying to start at kind of an end-to-end test level. Oh, fantastic. Thanks for that. So um, how about, talk to me about the TDD cycle. Yeah. So the TDD cycle is uh, red, green refactor. Uh-huh. So uh, the red stands for write a test that fails. So you should never with TDD write a test that passes first time. Okay. Because you shouldn't have written any code that would make it pass. So you'd write a failing test. Okay. Um, once you've got your failing test, you run it to make sure it does fail. And mm-hmm. then you then you see what error comes out and you fix that one error. And then you run your test again. Yeah. Um, and any errors that come out, you fix them. Uh, any failing failures of the test, you fix until the test goes green. And that's your green in your TDD cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and once, you fi- once you've got to a green state for your tests, then you come to the refactor stage. Yeah. And this is a chance to clean up any internal mess in the code you're writing, both tests and uh, implementation code. And that, that's kind of the TDD cycle. That's that, that's that quick loop that I was talking about, kind of yeah. that you just loop around that all day until the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, on your last talk in London, you talked about uh, the rules of TDD. And um, when, I speak, when I speak to developers a lot, they talk about Uncle Bob and, and so on. Yeah. So do you want to talk, talk to me about that? Yeah, so Uncle Bob's uh, three rules of TDD kind of extend on the TDD cycle. So it's still red-green refactor, but uh-huh. he takes it kind of a step further, which I think makes it really nice for learning TDD. Uh Uh, he takes an approach where when you're writing your test code, Uh if you get to a point where the code wouldn't compile or run, or there's some kind of error, you stop and you make that, you write enough implementation so that you can, so that the test would at least run in some way, even if it's not a completed test. Yeah. And then you go back to the test and you write, can continue in writing the test code until the, uh, test starts to fail in some way again, and then you go back to your implementation. So, for example, what you're, you could be writing your f- first test, and you could go, okay, so new up a new object of some kind. Okay, mm-hmm. the object doesn't exist, so go and create it. So that's your kind of red and then a little bit of green, 
and then you're continuing so you can go okay on this object i want to call a method mm -hmm. okay the idea is telling me that method doesn't exist so i'll go and go into the implementation code i'll create that method and once that method is created and the test code looks good then i can continue into kind of assertions and things yeah so that's that's uncle bob's three rules of tdd it's kind of taking the uh test the tdd cycle and just kind of taking it down to an even finer level interesting um earlier you were talking about um manual uh testing automated testing and and that kind of stuff. i don't think you mentioned automated testing but what's the what's the difference between those two so automated testing is uh, tests that can run automatically on some script. Right. Uh, so so um, TDD, you, in TDD, you're going to use some kind of automated testing tools. Mm -hmm. In PHP, you might be using PHP unit. Yeah. Or if you're doing BDD, you might be using BHAT. Yeah. Um, or you, uh, PHP spec. There's loads of different types of testing tools out there in PHP. Yeah. So those are your automated testing tools, and they they are set up so that they can run their tests over and over again automatically, easily, with basically you, you set up a script and your, your build pipeline can run those tests for you automatically. Yeah. Whereas manual tests are kind of, there's human interaction. Um, it's basically a, a human in some way running tests. So it could be you've got a big spreadsheet of things that uh, someone has to do uh -huh. to Kind of work their way through a system to yeah. kind of manually test it before that is allowed to go into production and that's kind of your manual testing approach so obviously a lot slower because um it involves someone sitting at a computer or sitting with a device and clicking and tapping and typing away yeah so whereas obviously automated tests will run a lot faster because it's just a computer and it can just throw the text in it can click really quickly obviously also you've got the issue with uh, manual testing where if it's someone doing the same repetitive task, then <laughs> the chances of mistakes or yeah. missing something yeah. are uh, kind of a bit high, well, obviously a lot higher than a, a computer that's going to do the same task over and over again. Yeah. Uh, as long as you tell it to. Interesting. So from a non-developer point of view, again, if I can do automated testing, why would I do manual testing? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's still a place for manual testing right obviously right. the tdd approach is not going to pick up the tiny little oddity bugs it'll pick up the big problems it won't do weird things because you've yeah. you've, okay. you've programmed it kind of you haven't thought about the odd things that a customer could do when right. they get your app in their hands right, right. so right. there's still room for kind of manual exploratory testing yes okay but if your qa team find some kind of oddity your first thing should be take that ticket turn it into a test so you can repeatedly test that weird case that happened yeah and then start to solve it so that then you know next time you'll never see that weird bug again you'll, next time you'll have another weird bug okay i get it i get it yeah so obviously when you do automated you it only does what you told it to do but there's some things you had not anticipated that could come up um, and that's when you're needed to step in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, how about unit tests? What is uh, so, what, what is unit test, and um, when 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 is it you know useful? So, unit tests are kind of your your lowest level tests. So, your test with a unit test, you're testing single functions at a time. You're looking at testing um, kind of the the low level implementation. So, you're looking at tests a unit test. You're, with unit tests, if you're following strict TDD, mm -hmm. you're going to get 100% line coverage because what you're looking at is you'll write, a, you'll start designing out your the way a class or a function is going to work. You're going to write a test and then you're going to write just enough code to make that test pass. Right. So taking it down to a really simple level, if you were writing a function for a queue, so you're, you're going to create a class that controls a queue. So mm -hmm. nice, simple kind of, queue every um you know first thing that goes into a queue is the first thing that comes off of a queue um and our first thing we want to know about the queue is whether it's empty or not yeah. so we're going to write a test uh to check is empty on an empty queue yeah and so we'll we'll instantiate the object and then we can assert that the queue object 
its function is empty returns true. Yeah. So that's our only test for that class. So all we're going to do in the is empty function is we're going to hard code the, re the return value to be true. So that's the only code we need that our tests tell us we need at the moment. Right. We need the return empty, the, sorry, the is empty function to return true. So that's it. We've written one line of code in a function to mm -hmm. return true and it's done. And then we need to move on to adding something into our queue. So when we add into our queue, we need to get is empty to return false. So yeah. we'll look at writing the simplest way to solve that problem is when we can move the return true, we can change that to be, we can return a class, we can have a class variable called is empty mm -hmm. on construction, we'll set that to be true. And then when you call the add method, we mm -hmm. just switch that true to be a false and return that. So it's kind of unit tests are really, they, they really break down each individual kind of function. Right. Uh, each kind of way that you can interact with that function down to a really low level. So you're looking at kind of that's, that, that, that's unit tests. Fantastic. So in regards to things like unit tests and what we just talked about, <coughs> TDD, um, is there any books you would recommend anyone to look at? Um, anyone who wants to learn a bit more about this or any, any videos? Yep. So there are two really great books. Uh -huh. Um, that I would definitely recommend if you really want to get into the TDD uh -huh. uh, really heavily. And they are, at, uh, what are they? Uh, Test Driven Development by Example. Okay. Um, and Growing Object Oriented Code Guided by Tests. Okay. So those are quite big, heavy books. I yeah. wouldn't recommend there be the first books you read. Yeah. As I said, if you kind of really get into it, then go on to those. Yeah. Uh, but I think. Uh, the Grumpy Programmers books on test driven development are brilliant. I've I've read uh, I think three of them. I can't see them on my bookshelf. Uh, but there's hang on. Uh, there's minimum viable testing is one. Uh, mm -hmm. they're, but they're really good books. He's also got a PHP Unit cookbook. Yeah. Which is a nice introduction to a great testing tool. Yeah. So those books are really good to read. Um, and there are loads of great resources on the internet uh, for uh, test driven development. Um, I'm trying to think of there's, I mean, if you just Google it, there's loads of videos. I've, um, I've just started a screencast myself on called testing all the things, awesome. which in which I'm kind of trying to introduce people to TDD very slowly yeah. uh, with live code, live coding demonstration. So there's currently two episodes out and I'm working on a lot more at the moment. So is that on YouTube? You or they're on YouTube, yeah. Uh, if I send you a link, you can add yeah. it into the show notes, maybe. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's called testing all the things. Okay, awesome. Yeah, definitely send me that, and I'll um, I'll attach it to um, when I'm posting this. Thanks for that. That's that's really um, that's really in good detail. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. For questions, feedback, suggestions, or topics you'd like us to cover in the future, please email php at c2bsolutions.org.uk. Thank you.